Hello everyone. It's a little dim today, um, just because it's kind of dark outside, and we usually use a lot of daylight in this room to get uh, our our lighting. So I'm just doing some adjustments, but uh, I just want to say uh, welcome to everybody who's jumping on. Um, it's uh, wonderful to be here with you to do our Friday morning devotional again. And if you're wondering, hey, you always promise that either Pastor Jess or Pastor Adam is going to be doing them, I'm just uh, letting you know that uh, Pastor Jess has been pretty busy this week, of course, as I've always mentioned, but uh, she's going to be preaching this Sunday, so you get to uh, see and hear her uh, in more of a, uh, a formal setting. She will be with you on Sunday. I am excited today because there's lots of great things happening in this devotional. I wanted to make sure that we had some songs. We have a hymn. We also have a fun song that I've always loved. And uh, I was just practicing the song right before I went online. And uh, Jess texted me saying, that's a little high, isn't it? Uh, fact is, I'm still trying to find the right key, and I think I found one that works. I can't do those octave jumps. I have to tell you, being a worship pastor in 2020 is, it was probably worse a couple years ago, but every new worship song has a range that is significantly difficult for many people. Uh, right now, we have our full worship team, all volunteers working together to discuss and talk about music and, uh, you know, what's good, how are things going and all of that. The discussion is really great and important for us. And I know, it hasn't come up yet, but I know that if we really got into the weeds in it all, we would be talking about those octave jumps and how new songs are always so difficult to sing, which is probably true, especially for a congregation. Like we make you guys do it all the time. And we apologize. We are very sorry. Uh, we know that it's not easy. It's not fun. Nothing like worshiping and then realizing my voice can't do that. And then just, you know, quietly humming along from the seats. Uh, but uh, we do we do know that they can sound really, really nice. They're very well written. So we bring them in now and again. Uh, you'll notice that the tag at the top of the video just says Friday Devo. I'm going to add the information after the fact. Um, like I said, I was getting some things ready, so I didn't put in all the details there. Uh, so I guess it'll be a surprise as we go. Uh, for those of you tuning in after the fact, you will kind of see where we are going with this. But uh, the two songs that I'm going to be singing with you this morning uh, have to do with surrender and surrendering to our Lord and Savior, uh, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, that triune God that directs and guides our heart. We need to really submit to him. And I believe that uh, that really provides us with great perspective in light of where we are today. So let's uh, begin with prayer and uh, a drink of coffee. I hope you have one, so I'm keeping you going today. And then we'll have a time of worship together. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every blessing that you bestow upon us. They are great in abundance, and we could never truly count them all. But uh, we, we reflect on that you are a blessing God. You are a nurturing God, a caring God, who loves us greatly. And I pray that uh, as we uh, talk about surrendering to you and seeing this world and, and its activities through your lens, uh, I pray that you give us your heart along with your perspective, that it beats for what you care for most, and that is people, people in this world. So I thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pray that you're blessed today. Like I said, I would take a drink of coffee. I might as well. Who's still warm? Good. So I've... Um, I've debated on if I would play it or not because it projects very differently, but I have a new guitar uh, that finally came in, and I'm kind of really excited for it. Um, it's uh, it's a smaller body guitar, and it's all these fancy mm -hmm. things. If Mitch Horner ever jumps in to see this later or you know some of the other videos that are going to come out with us, um, it is actually a name brand that makes good guitars, which is a tailor compared to most other guitars I've used. Um, in the past so I finally found my way to something it's probably their most low-end model or close to 
but uh, you know what? I actually really like it. It's comfortable, and I'm excited to play it for you today. So we're going to start with uh, a beautiful hymn, I Surrender All, just to get us in the mood to understand, yeah, it's all about Jesus. Amen? One second, I'm gonna kill a centipede. I can't get it. I can't get the centipede. Jess is probably freaking out downstairs. I thought I'd catch him, but I can't catch him. In his presence, free.
Jesus. We surrender to you. Isn't he worthy of our praise? I haven't played this song in quite some time. Um, so I'm going to be playing it in a funny key.
thank you, Jesus. Praise you, mighty God. We want to know him more, and it's truly surrendering to him that allows that. Amen. So let's uh, take some moments to look into scripture and see what, uh, what God wants to maybe tell us through his word. I believe uh, that through any situation and any storm that we face, whatever's going on, that there is actually a rejuvenating scripture there for us to allow us some clarity uh, of thought and understanding. We don't always get the answers we're looking for in prayer. We don't always get, you know, these direct, absolute, hey, here's my perfect will for for your life, or here's, um, you know, the instructions of everything you need to do today to make everything better. But we can be comforted and strengthened and understand much from God's word. And uh, though some of you are probably saying, what do you mean? Of course, there's perfect instruction for life there. You're right. But, you know, we, we as human beings look for great detail. And I know that sometimes it's not always right there for us. Let me start to read. Um, there's a little devotional that Jess has by Max Licato, which I think is really good. And uh, there's one that jumped out at me that is titled, Why Sickness? And I thought, well, that's interesting and very fitting for today. So I want to start there. Uh, the scripture that uh, Max is pulling from is Jeremiah 17, 14. Okay, so let me read that scripture for you first. It says this. Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. So this is what Max has to say about that. Why do we get sick? For the same reason we still sin. This is a fallen world, and the kingdom is a kingdom that is coming. Sickness and sin stalk our planet, but neither sin nor sickness will have dominion over God's people. Sin cannot condemn us. Disease cannot destroy us. Guilt is defanged, and death has lost its sting. In fact, the very sin and sickness that Satan intends for evil, God redeems for good. Sin becomes a showcase of his grace. Sickness becomes a demonstration of God's ability to heal. We aren't victims of rogue molecules or rebellious cells. We do not live beneath the specter or uncontrollable plagues or emotions. Every fiber, molecule, and brainwave answers to his command. God is in charge. And I thought that was really a beautiful thing. And what that ended up doing when reading it is it sparked in me um, um, this, this idea that God uses things that we know were never intended for good for good. And I've been preaching on that for a while. We've been doing these teachings for some time, and you're no stranger to me saying that all things work for good. And I quote Romans 8, because in a time like a pandemic when we think, hey, there's a lot of destruction, you know, Satan might be winning. I've had lots of people tell me that before. And the fact is, we're in such a place where it's all perspective. You can look and see that there is Satan using things for his own agenda, but why not? Broken world, something bad happens. Of course, he's going to grab that and run with it. But so does God. He grabs every piece of this broken world and he runs with it, but for the sake of good, for blessing and grace. So um, just uh, last night, talking with a group of people, um, we had this really neat, just short discussion in the middle of our conversation, in the middle of our meeting, about uh, a quote that's been going around social media. And it's a quote that is uh, attributed to C.S. Lewis. And I, I, we think that that most likely has been used as a method to get it out there so that people can see it and read it. But uh, C.S. Lewis did not say this. Um, it is still wise and very healthy, and I think it's something I want to read for you about the perspectives of God and what Satan would maybe use such a pandemic for. But uh, uh, it's, it's an unknown author as far as I understand. This is what it says. Satan said, I will cause anxiety, fear, and panic. I will shut down business, schools, places of worship, 
and sports events. I will cause economic turmoil. And then Jesus said, I will bring together neighbors, restore the family unit. I will bring dinner back to the kitchen table. I will help people slow down their lives and appreciate what really matters. I will teach my children to rely on me and not on the world. I will teach my children to trust me and not their money and material resources. How true is that? That something so bad can be used for so good. And it really all depends on your perspective. And I pray that you, church, Christians, maybe non-Christians tuning in, wondering what's going on, who's this guy with a crazy deep v-neck. Fact is, God can use anything this world throws at us for good. He can use it to actually instill some sort of blessing or mis misplaced important piece of your life, he could bring it to the forefront. And we need to give him that recognition. God is still so good and his grace abounds. And we're so blessed to be in a chaotic time, but have so much hope and to be leaning on a Lord that is our portion. He is our deliverer. He is the one that's guiding us through it all. We're better through this than we were probably before it because we let him do the work. We let him do the work through it, and we are better. So another scripture I want to read happens to be an old Sunday school story that many of you maybe heard. I know I grew up with the Sunday school story. It comes with a song, which I won't sing. I sang enough already. But the idea of the foolish man that Jesus teaches about that builds his house upon sand um, as if it's flowy and unstable. And storms come in this story, and it pushes this entire uh, fortress, this house, this life, off its foundation of sand and crumbles down. So then he talks about a wise man that builds his home, his life, his everything, builds that home on rock, something solid that is not swayed or pushed around. And when its storms come and waters rise, it stands true and doesn't budge. But in both stories, the storms come. There is still, there is still the fact that storms are coming, rains are falling and floods are rising on the righteous and the unrighteous, on the foolish and on the wise. And the difference is your foundation. Where are you holding on to, clinging to, basing your life on? What perspective, as we just talked about, are you holding on to in this storm? So that scripture, the rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew against that house and it did not fall because it was on the foundation of rock, is Matthew seven twenty five, And this is a little devotional, again, written in accordance with that. An illness, an accident, a betrayal. Uh, many of us face all of these types of storms. They come into our lives and they will bring sorrow and pain. Let's face it, disaster can strike whether you're a saint or a sinner, right? To survive requires spiritual preparation. When you build your home on a foundation of God's word, you will find safety despite the downpour outside. You can help those who love um, you love to weather the storm. Now begin to prepare your house for the storms and be sure that they will come. Spend time in the Bible. Strengthen your relationship with God and with godly community. Bring those you love before God in prayer and the temp when the tempest strikes, you will have shelter. The special thing that this says that I like that I just want to point out is if you're taking the perspective, and I pray that you are, that God's in control and can do some great things with some pretty crazy pieces, a chaotic world, then that foundation that you have in God is good. And you're building a healthy structure around you that is solid and, and, and it's well placed. So then, as we, because we've been doing this, as we have been strengthening ourselves and preparing for the positive you know, understanding of God's perspective. 
and readying ourselves and doing these good things that we read in this quote that Jesus said we would be able to do. Now look toward those who have the other perspective or those who are in our community and culture who are afraid and don't know what to do and bring them into your shelter. I'm not saying open your home and all that stuff during COVID, but I am saying use your influence and your voice and start to stretch out that perspective. Let people know that there is another way to look at this whole thing, that there is a grace-giving God, that there is a healing God. He's never stopped doing that. We've heard stories over and over again that he is still healing and bringing grace to those um, in our midst. So church, we are building and structuring ourselves very well, and that's good. But I believe that now is the time, and I'm calling you to it. Let's take our next stage, our next steps as a church, as a body, as a people, and let's start to extend and encourage this shelter we've built of weathering storms. And let's let people know that there is a hope, there is a future, and that there is a God that can bring them through. Because the more we spread that out, the more we help them, and the more we don't dig into the outliers. I know it can be easy. It can feel, you know, easy to sit around and complain about stuff. Uh, It can be easy to sit around and look to um, various conspiracy theories and everything else, which is just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And church, I don't know why but it seems to be incredibly strong within the Christian community. Please build your house on some rock and not on some sand. Don't be confused. Don't be swayed. Use wisdom. Wisdom doesn't dictate jumping off the deep end and being confused. Wisdom dictates solid trust in our Lord. And if something seems fishy or out of sorts, then Hold that skepticism and research and think and pray about it. But to just blast social media with conspiracy theories and outlandish ideas isn't helping a single person cling to our Lord, especially when we're trying to represent Jesus very well in this time. Does that make sense? I really hope you understand that. And it's, it's our duty. It's still our duty to be people that witness and share about the grace of God. And he's still good. He's not changing. So we shouldn't either. We should still be on his side and we should still be bringing him the love and the grace of our own humility. We need him at the forefront of it all. Okay, church, does that make sense? I'm going to pray with you one more time before we go, but I hope that you understood the message is really simple and really true. There's two sides to look at what's happening, and uh, I adhere to the one where we have a sovereign Lord ahead of it all, and I want to bring people into that category. I want people to see the truth. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, you're so good. You are so, so good. And I thank you for all the blessings that you bring us. I pray that you continue to do your work here in this world, uh, that bringing grace and healing and that our trust just grows in you as we realize no matter what this world has to throw at us, you are doing such great things. It is unfathomable, Lord. Uh, Let us bring people into that camp. Let them understand that this is okay. We can get through this because we have a God who is so, so good doing wonderful things. Uh, We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And I encourage everyone tuning in, watching this, even after the fact, that they would know you as their Lord and Savior and start to trust you through this time. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Take care. We'll see you again very soon. And we look really forward to seeing you on Sunday.